right, so I just want to jump on and talk about uh, how it's been living with the SL3 uh, since March. Um, really, uh, really have loved this camera. Um, I've shot Sony, shot Canon before, played around with, uh, with some Fujis and whatnot. Um, this is, again, my, my Q2 is my first kind of foray into Leica. I'm actually shooting right now with my Q3. And this is my SL3 with the 75 uh, APO. Um, it's not a camera for everyone. Camera's got its quirks. To me, I, I really have enjoyed this camera. I've enjoyed the system ever since I've kind of dipped my toes with the Q2 and then you know, kind of made the plunge with the M11. Uh, I, I, I like it. Um, photography, um, especially the kind of photography I like to take. Um, uh, I'm in, based in, in California. I like to take portrait photography, landscapes, travel, uh, a little bit of everything, street, sports. Again, that, not, not the best sports camera. But surprisingly, does really well, really well, and the uh, the weather, the uh, the weather resistance and resistance to the heat, this thing has actually held up quite well. Uh, you're not going to get the frames per second. You're definitely going to miss some shots. But a lot of the sports I'm doing is just for for fun, not professionally. <laughs> if I was, then I could always rent a Canon or, or Sony. Um, so I, I like it. I, I'll just kind of jump on, just kind of tell you uh, my input. I know there's there's always a lot of haters. I, of all the cameras I've shot before, I've never, I've never witnessed, uh, none of it directed towards me, just, just the poor camera itself and, and the brand. I've never, um, seen so much hate. Um, to me, and everyone has certain things that they value, right? Um, to me, I, I value the heritage I value the feel uh, of a camera. Again, this is this is a tool, but it's not like a wrench or a drill. This is an artistic tool, camera. And I do believe, and you know, there's other photographers that have probably said this better than I will or I can. But I, I do believe you, you need to feel connected, and you need to enjoy having this tool, this photography tool, this artistic tool in your hand. Maybe more similar to an artist that has particular paintbrushes that they like to use or particular types of paints or substrates they, they like to work with. You, you have to enjoy using it. You have to enjoy holding it. You have to enjoy the actual process. And and that may not be uh, an opinion that's shared with all photographers. That's that's my opinion and my opinion alone. I know some others share that opinion. And those are the kind of people that I think are drawn to products that that cater more towards that that point of view or that approach to, to what a camera should be. Um, and to me, uh, and I'm not saying like it is is the camera for everyone, but for me it is. And and for me, I, I've really enjoyed it. The way I like to, to shoot, the way uh, I like to, to go ahead and and um, process my images and and the way I like to, to go ahead and transfer the images off of the camera, it works for me and I really enjoyed the process. So, um, yeah, I mean, I enjoy the fact that this this camera is is made with uh, with care and uh, and is still manufactured in Germany. Um, you know, yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but you're paying for that, right? I to me that means a lot to me when I when I, I feel the quality in this camera immediately. If you were to ever go ahead and you have the opportunity to to pick one up or to try one. I strongly encourage you to do so. Actually, your wallet or checking account may not encourage you to do so, but um, but I, I strongly encourage you to do so just just for the heck of it. Um, you immediately feel the robustness and and the quality in these cameras, whether it be the Q3, the M11, uh, the SL3. Um, again, I 
can't help but uh, pick that camera. I just love it. But um, so that's the first thing. I, I love the build quality. I love the way these cameras feel. Okay. Um, the way this thing has operated in some really, really extreme heat. Again, another another positive. I, I really love how this thing is held up. Again, I'm in Southern California. I've shot uh, some sports, some water polo and swimming where the actual measured temperature has been like 115, 120 out in the desert. The pool deck gets really hot. I honestly couldn't tell you because I didn't have like a radar go with me how hot it gets on that pool deck. But if it's being measured in the air at 115, 120, you can just imagine how hot that pool deck is. And I'm usually going there with a foldable chair and I'm just situated right there on the pool deck with my camera and uh, haven't gotten any heat warnings. Thing hasn't locked up on me, hasn't, hasn't malfunctioned in any way whatsoever during any of those, those situations. Um, now, it, yeah, just like my Sony Canon, yeah, I have probably had to turn it off, pop the battery, and put it back in and turn on the camera and it works fine. I probably had to do that three, max four times since I've had it in March. Never lost any images, never any of that. Um, <laughs> no issues whatsoever. Been very extremely reliable. Autofocus on this thing is definitely a huge improvement. And I'm expecting it only to get better, but I wouldn't be this happy. And I don't think in this day and age you can, you can hope for improvements. I like the autofocus the way it is right now. It's super snappy. I've been shooting kids, sports, uh, portrait shoots, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple examples with this SL3 and specifically the 75 Apo. Some will have uh, maybe the 35 Sumicron that I had for a while. Um, but this 75 Apo is amazing. Uh, I know some people have asked for, for reviews on that, and I, I will do that, I will do that. I think I'm kind of creating a, a full diverse body of work with the 75, um, but, it's definitely not going to be a bad review. It's amazing. I mean, the only con to it is, is the damn price. It's the only con to any of these cameras <laughs> is the price. But there is a price for superior build quality. There is a price for making sure that there are glass and quality glass components, even on the inside of this camera, where other manufacturers are going to put high-grade plastics. Uh, there is a, a cost to a camera that has the highest uh, weather uh, certification or weather resistance than any other camera out there right now in 2024. Um, there, there is a price that there is a price to the fact that they're, that they back up their, their products, which, which a huge warranty props to, uh, to Sony, because I've seen they starting to extend their warranties. Now, if you register the product, uh, Panasonic has a three year warranty. Uh, the Leicas have a three year warranty on their lenses. Sigma has great warranties on their Japanese made lenses. Again, these kind of manufacturers that take pride in where their products are manufactured and how they're manufactured and the quality control, that's what I value. Um, I'm spending my hard, hard earned money. I want these things to last. I want there to be bumps and scars on this because it's going to happen if you're using your equipment. I still take care of my stuff, but it's gonna happen if you actually use it, you're actually bringing your camera and you're working day in, day out and you're enjoying it and you're taking pictures and you're out and about, you're gonna get it. I want those dents and those bumps and those things to occur and it to still work and still function. And it does. And these cameras just keep on, keep on clicking, uh, no, no issues. Um, so what else, what else do I like about the SL3? Why do I like this camera? Why do I like shooting with it? Um, the images that come out of this camera, um, I'm obviously shooting raw. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and go into, into color science, but what you're getting out of this camera are in DNGs. Uh, those DNGs look amazing. Uh, the preview, the screen quality the, on the back of this screen and the quality of the images, um, are amazing. That right off the bat, that matters to me because I like what I see and that's close to what my end product is going to be when I go ahead and download those images. 
um, and process them. It's, it's the same thing. It's very close from what I see on the back of the screen to, to my end product. Um, I, I like that because when I'm especially doing portraits, um, this is where it comes into play, is I like to go ahead and keep continuing to show the images. And when those images look good, well, your client starts to get really excited. They start getting pumped up and the energy uh, of the shoot starts to grow and build. You know, those first 15 minutes, those first 30 minutes, depending on how long it takes to kind of warm up with it for the client, um, that's crucial. And kind of building that energy, building that confidence, and then seeing the images you're capturing and you being able to show that. And, and the better that screen looks, the better those files look right out of the gate, the more excited they're going to get, the more energy they're going to have. Um, Canon does a good job with this, okay? Like, it's not the only one. Hasselblad obviously does a great job with that. Great camera. The, the images look amazing. Uh, Sony, that was my one major thing. That means a lot to me. For some, it doesn't. I always had to tell people when I was shooting Sony, look, look, look in the viewfinder. Look in the viewfinder. It looks so much better because that image in the viewfinder looks so much better than what was on the back of that screen. Um, that always bugged me. Okay, so that's why I eventually went to Canon, one of the reasons. Um, so the images. Not only that, but the final images you get, I, I don't have to do a whole lot with them. I don't have to do a whole lot with those images at all. Well, they look beautiful. The colors look beautiful. The contrast looks beautiful. It's something about these images. And now I've been shooting Leica for, um, I guess it's I guess it's probably a couple of years now. Um, I can tell. I can tell even if it's just on Instagram, uh, what ca camera it is most of the time, most of the time I'm pretty good. Um, you know, if you go ahead and have your own style and stuff like that, but if you're keeping things pretty true to, to the camera style or pretty true to the camera, I, I can kind of tell, I can tell in my own work, which camera is which without having to look at the, the info for the most part. Okay. Uh, that's another thing I like. Again, trying to, trying to be quick and not <laughs> get caught in the weeds with the details. Um, also, another thing, really, really, really like, real unique to, to Leica, and I, I don't feel like this gets enough attention, is the Leica Photos app and the way I can use the camera and my phone. I'm actually using my phone right now as a remote or, and as a monitor with my Q3 uh, for what I'm filming right now. Okay, and it works amazing. It's been working flawless um, with the Leica Photos app. One app, super easy to connect to Q3, SL3. Uh, also, have this app downloaded on my iPad. Okay, that's also where I do a lot of my uh, photo processing. That is a story for the other day. I've been using my iPad Pro for for most of my processing. Um, for years now, probably four or five years. Okay, so that's that's all, maybe a topic for another day. So, to me, I really like that Leica Photos app. Um, and I don't wanna get caught too much into the details, but it connects so easily to the camera. I, I have always, and I think most people are like this, none of these camera apps really work other than, in my opinion, the Leica Photos app. And I've always just taken the memory cards out, throw them into a reader, and boom, download them, call them. Sometimes some people use Photo Mechanic to kind of call down larger shoots. I find myself, both with the Q3, and I was doing this with the M11, and I do this now with the SL3, is I just connected to the Leica Photos app, and I can call them right there. I can go ahead and star right there on the Leica Photos app, and then download super quickly the actual raw DNG images onto my iPad uh, because that's where I usually do the, the editing. I'll download the DNGs through the iPad, only of the ones I want, and then I'll go ahead and immediately, you can download it even directly into Lightroom. Uh, but just to have a little intermediate backup, especially if I'm on location, I like to download them to the iPad and I've gotten memory on my iPad. I think I have a one terabyte on there specifically for that reason, because I kind of use this as a little additional layer of backup. So you've got one SD, I got the, you know, one SD card, the X, uh, the CF Express card, and then I'll also have those until they're actually fully uploaded to the cloud on the actual iPad. So that's just the way I like to do it. 
Plus, you can go ahead and let the client go ahead and call them right there on the iPad and then download it right there. Amazing. Um, the Sony Image, Image Edge apps, uh, the Canon apps, the Canon was a little bit better. It's just not as easy. It is absolutely seamless. So again, I could probably spend a whole video <laughs> talking about why I love the Leica Photos app, but to kind of bring it right back around to what I was saying in the beginning, it makes it more enjoyable. That's what I was saying about my workflow and making the, the workflow enjoyable and not just the image taking, but everything more enjoyable. For me, it works. It works. Uh, I think I'm definitely in the minority. I think most people don't edit their photos. I, have, I know that because when I tell other photographers, they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. And I've been doing it for years and I love it. Um, is there some occasions where I had to bring the images into Photoshop? More so in the past than I do now, especially with all the upgrades that Adobe has been making uh, to to Photoshop uh, on iPad and also Lightroom on iPad. Uh, so I, I haven't found myself doing that very much at all. Uh, there are some batch things like copying uh, the the actual skin and eye masks, which I can do in batch uh, in batch form on on the desktop version, and that's typically what I'll still do um, to go ahead and kind of save my a little bit of time. But that's that's in a nutshell. I, I don't want to go down and you know rabbit hole, but those those are some of the main reasons why I'm really really happy with with the SL3. And again, and my whole reason for telling this is is not to convince other people, but hopefully uh, you shoot the similar style or you can relate. You value the same kind of things. Your priorities and and um, and features in a camera are perhaps maybe similar to mine, or maybe they're dissimilar to mine, and it kind of confirms that hey, you know what, yeah. I don't really care about those things like as and great then maybe in some way I'm, I'm adding value to you but um that's really the whole point of this just kind of let you know where where i'm coming from where what features and what i value and how the actual real world experience of living with this camera since march uh, it's been about what six months now uh doing several types of different shoots whether it be portraits um uh, you know sports um uh, landscape, travel, uh, all of it. I, I've really enjoyed using the camera. So that's that. That's uh, that's all I have to share. And if you got any questions or comments or anything else you, you'd like to know, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll uh, make sure to try and get back to you as soon as possible. All right. Okay. Thanks. Hopefully this is helpful. All right.